every player who hobbles or limp, mo- a lot of them were cramp. A lot of them were little things like a little bit of a sore ankle or a bit of soreness. And we were fortunate where in that last 10 minutes, 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, we got uh, comfortable enough on the scoreboard to be able to not risk people staying on with cramp or not risk people staying on with slight little tweaky ankles or etc. So Johnny Gray, Slady there in full training today. Uh, Joe Simmons is, is training fully. Um, who else came off? Woody, uh, Woody uh, training fully. So we, you know we're selected from a full strength side. Jack Noel trained yesterday, so again he's in contention. I think there's a sense of disappointment from everybody who's involved in the competition. They were not playing in front of supporters, and obviously playing in front of supporters would have meant you know playing in front of supporters in, Mar- in Marseille. Um, but it would have meant also playing in front of a full house in the quarterfinal against Northampton, which would have been amazing. That would have been an electric day. Um, we wouldn't have been, reality is we wouldn't have been able to play the semi-final, or probably not play the semi-final here. Although we were told, I think, that if there was a, a lack of travelling support, which there may have been from Toulouse, I, it's not for me to say, there may have been the opportunity to play the semi-final here, but, but likely not. Um, so, the rea- so the reality is that you know, that game would have been, it would have been somewhere here in England on our full standing, but it wouldn't, have, that may well have ended up at Bristol, but it would have been an incredible day. So I think we've missed, we've missed the supporters and we've missed, you know, the electric. There's a, there is some, where everybody says, as great as a result is and as great as it feels afterwards, there is a different atmosphere when it's genuinely a round house supporting you in the whole emotional wave that's there. And I'm not saying so much we'll miss going to Marseille, but I think we're missing playing in front of sports. Of course we are, but every, every sportsman will say that. And that's just because it's a huge part of the, of the whole sporting environment. You know, the, the same question a couple of weeks ago was about um, Chesney Colby, wasn't it? And we talked then about how we control him as a team. And that's very much what we've got to do now. It's not, it's not going to be a one, a one shot thing that's going to um, help combat him you know at the end of the day he's a fly half so he needs he'll want quality ball where you can affect his quality of ball around how you work at the set piece how you work at the breakdown uh, how much uh, then you can put him under pressure with line speed or or numbers Um, and then you can obviously you have you can have a look at his kicking game by reading body language by picking up the tails in their attacking formations you know there's there's things we're going to have to do as a team you know it's not it's not going to come down to one or two areas and the thing is, all those areas will will help us in all other areas as well. The areas that help you help you fly hunt half under pressure are exactly the areas you want to try and win in any game of rugby anyway. So there is a reality that we're we're certainly not completely zoned in on one guy. We're going to have team processes to deal with their threats and team processes to help put them under pressure, and we're going to have to function that way if we're going to have any chance of winning the game. We take a long time on selection, and we look at all of those things. So. You look at you know Jack um, how he played before he picked up that foot that that foot injury late on in the Toulouse game. How he played against Northampton, he scored a fantastic try in that game. How he played against Toulouse, how he's played as you say in other big games for us. Like you say, I think he was. I don't think I've seen a winger play a bigger, better game in a Premiership final than Jack Noel played last season. So you look at that and you know what he's he's capable of doing. But at the same time, we have to watch him train and assess it carefully to make sure he's he, he's at that level to be able to perform like that. And, at the same time, we have to take into account the performances of Tom O'Flaherty, who's been very consistent over an extended period of time now. And Ollie Woodburn came back and had a great game in the semi-final after um, a little period out with an injury. So we've got to take all of those things into account. There isn't any one thing that trumps the others. And we've just got to, when we assess all those things, just feel we come up with the, the right and the, the honest and the, the, the best decision. It's a, it, I think most the most the staff here, and I think now quite a few of the players, because of the straight the season, will tell you. You know, we get tested on a we get tested on a Tuesday morning. We don't start hearing the results till uh, I think today they started coming through at about twenty past five in the morning. Um, I can tell you for a fact that virtually all the staff are sat there by their phones by then by five o'clock because you just it's the thing that flips everything because immediately if you start having any positive tests coming, then you've got to start straight away dealing with not only um, how you would change selection if some of that of your frontline 23 start going down, but also you have to start the track and trace procedure to see which other players may be removed from your selection opportunities as well to, for, for, the social, you know, for um, social interaction, etc. And, and may have to go into isolation. So 
yeah, it's always a it's always a, an interesting period of time, and it's got more and more as you say, it's got more and more interesting as we've got to bigger and bigger games. I'll keep it pretty simple because the trouble is when people want to talk about leadership, they want to try and make it very very complex and very difficult. The reality is we've seen him as a uh, as a, good, a young player coming through, playing very well, a player with a big future. Um, introduced him into our leadership group because obviously as a young fly half coming through, he had to start taking responsibility for leaderships of areas of the game. Um, as things happened over the last two years, um, he's become one of that leadership group who has started regularly. So we felt that if we were if we were going down that same path, then we would follow it through and give him the opportunity to captain the side. He's done that very well. And and the ser- and and the biggest thing for me, and I, I'll keep it very simple for everybody: look at the guy's face at the end of a game, and you'll see how much emotion, flat out, absolute emotion, he's put into that performance. And um, you know, often, you know, what do people want more than anything else? They want an emotional leader. They want a guy who it's meaning everything to. And I see that in Joe. I see it, I see it all the time. Um, and that probably individually means more to me than anything else. If he makes the odd wrong decision or if he says the odd wrong thing in a team meeting, it doesn't mean an awful lot to me. Being Having a 100% emotional buy-in to what we're trying to achieve as a team, that means everything to me. So that's the simple answer, really. I genuinely feel, and I've, one of the probably biggest lessons I've learned as we've gone as we've gone along is, you know, we don't want to sit here and talk about, our, but isn't it amazing? We've got to a final dining cup. We can go there and give it a go, and it'll be brilliant. And whatever happens, it'll be a brilliant season. We move way beyond that, and so if it looks like guys are cool and calm and collected or whatever, it's because we feel we're getting our prep. We're not, we're not just running around with big smiles on our faces being silly because we've got to a European final for the first time. We're actually locking down into what it'll take to win it. And I think, I think that's just where we are. So we're just approaching it in a very normal way. And the normal way will be if, and this is the way I look at it, if we go there and we give of our best, we give ourselves a great chance of winning and our whole approach has to be around that. How do we get tactically and technically prepared? How do we get physically right? And then in these last two or three days, it's about how we, we really recharge those emotional batteries to be ready to, ready to go on Saturday. And that process is one we've been involved with over a number of years and we've got better and better at it. And so that approach isn't going to change.